what you were talking about earlier, the yeah. meta of like where to put your units. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like he was baiting him into sieging on that on the, yeah. the main base and he didn't do it. If he had just stood there normally with the move Bunny had chosen, he would have gotten a kill. It's, it's yeah, funny. It's so <laughs> funny. It's like when Bunny was coming in and instead of uh, Zess hiding the stalkers far away, he just like had them right at the entrance. So yeah. Bunny's going back and multitasking somewhere else and he just loses the medevac. Yeah. Look at this really well placed Widow Mines. Oh my god, he's oh. going to lose this maybe. Ooh. Good thing he turns around. There was a turret there. There's everything. Yeah, so that gets bruised. Okay, double forge, uh, definitely something you're going to want to get, considering you're going more gateway heavy rather than robo heavy with this build. That's right. Getting that, going for actually glaives over charge. Okay. This observer should be spotted. There it is, taken out, um, but not before he starts that command center. Although I think it was pretty clear um, to Zest with the SCV over there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's going to eventually have to take a third with Protoss, taking a third of his own. This Liberator comes in, <laughs> nicely annoying, done. Yeah, and Bunny is moving out with that push now. Now, see, this is, it's not like the scariest army there's ever been, but it has plus one combat shield, stim, and two siege tanks. This is an only stalker army right now. Five gates are about to finish. Glaives will not be done for the beginning of this attack. Okay, he's got the stalkers. He has to be very careful to blink away the weaker ones. Okay. See, Garrett. he's slowing it down as much as he can right now. He needs those gates finishing. He needs another couple of rounds of units. Okay, now the Warprism's war going around here. He's, he's done a decent job so far. Uh, siege tank siege up, sieges up, excuse me. Yeah, there's the tasteless uh, grassy grove like or whatever we're calling grassy it. grassy knoll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice blink in from behind, actually, picking off the siege tank. Very good move by Zest. Okay, um, fortunately, doesn't quite have enough to bite from that angle. Mm. But if he does get a good angle here, he can swallow up this entire attack. Uh, the siege tank dealing some massive damage to these stalkers, Shank. but he will eventually hold it, losing some probes as he hits to the front with these zealots okay, as well. this is so good. He's getting the medevacs. Or at least the ones he could get. Ooh, look but at he this. Eight probes, nine, 11, 12, 13 probes. Yeah. See, this is exactly what I was talking about. This type of Twilight build it has a hard time against this push, and that grassy knoll is hard to break through. Okay, comes up now. Uh, overextension there. But look, he got 13 probes, and he did yeah. keep those two medevacs alive. We didn't see what happened with that. I mean, that was did a he big... make some adepts and hit the expansion? And there's an immortal oh, the over here. I'm not sure actually yeah. what he did with that. That's a good question. I, I don't. I don't think any army came from around there. This mm. is because he rallied observers here, guys. Oops. My observer immortal defense here will be unstoppable. Don't fall. It's close to the edge. <laughs> if you could fall off edges in this game, yeah, imagine I would, that you like right I would click quit the game. Just, <laughs> That's like what right would get your me army is just like a bunch of lemmings running <laughs> off a cliff. He's so <laughs> funny. I just one misclick, it all goes down a cliff. Oh my god. Giving me nightmares. Okay, a drop by Bunny here in the main base. Bunny it really has a strong advantage here, especially like with the army supply difference here. This is a big deal. Like if you're going Robo, you have splash. He doesn't have any splash damage, so he has to fight everything head up. This is really tough for Zest right now. Okay, with more warpins coming in here, uh, Widow Mines are out. He does drive back the drop, but the uh, Widow Mines, of course, still do remain over here. Is that Immortal still over there? Yeah, I think it probably is, but I haven't seen it. Good oh. snipe here on the Widow Mine. Yeah, Mortal's still over here, just keeping that edge of the map safe. <laughs> He's making sure Terran doesn't expand to that gold. That's right. <laughs> oh, man, that's always painful. It's an expensive unit. Okay, Zess is actually going for an attack. This is a little bit desperate. This is a There's little no bit crazy. There's no way that this will kill him. Yeah. Like um, ever in a million years? Yeah. I don't care how many Guardian Shields, guys. <laughs> it's like, I don't care if it's all sentries and all Guardian Shields. It's like, well, that's not actually good at all anyways. <laughs> yeah. But... That's a waste of mana. Yeah, that's he could have used force field there. Yeah, and he's uh, trying to cut through as much as possible. I'm actually surprised he got 21 SCVs off of that. That was that was actually more damage than I thought he'd do with that attack. Well, let's that's kind of worker count's dead even now, 44 to 44. That's a, that's kind of impressive, but that's better for the Terran player, of course. He has his mules, doesn't need to have as many workers uh, necessarily as the Protoss. Um, you know what? Actually, Zess is beginning to put the pressure yeah. on here. Yeah. It seems like things are starting to fall apart. Just imagine if Zess had the Immortal with this army instead of guarding. Yeah, really. That right edge of the map. Very One thing impressive. we do know is that the Immortals of Zess do not get vertigo on that edge. Oh, man. And now he's going to lose all these stalkers, though. This is brutal. And GG. GG. All right. Well, we yeah. now know that the Immortal on the edge of the map with the two observers should be no longer used on the ladder nah. <laughs> after seeing how Bunny handles a strat like that. Now, I'm still in shock that Zest 
banned Overgrowth and let Bonnie through because, right. like, I understand why you went for Twilight Tech because drops are such a problem there, but the two Siege Tank push then becomes the problem if you go for Twilight Tech. So, a Bunny really kind of double underlying, the, like, you know, the problems with, you know, defending in that little choke, the problems with going Twilight against the double Siege Tank push after Widowmine drop. Like, very well done by Bunny and, and Zest having a hard time in this group so far tonight. A 2-1 over Keen, a narrow victory, and now a, a, a loss here against Bunny. Well, Zest is not going to be happy about that. Zest was the player who was supposed to, no matter what, get out of this group. And, um, he, I mean, he still can, but mm -hmm. now he's got to fight tooth and nail. It's coming up next, we've got the losers match. Yeah, Keen versus Rogue coming up. Uh, I wonder who Zest would rather play here, actually. Hmm. Let's go to an interview and see how Bunny's feeling. I'm going to go to the interview and see how Bunny's feeling. I'm going to go to the interview You always had the potential. But now you've made it to the round of 16. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. So you defeated Rogue and Zest to advance. That's first place. How do you feel? If I was the same me as I was last year, it would have been a really tough group for me. But I'm a different person now. I'm a different player now. I trained so hard for this. I can assure you that I've had more practice hours than all the guys in my group. I was a little bit nervous, but overall I just had a lot of confidence. And I think that carried me through this group. Wow. 확실히 근거도 있었고 오늘 딱 웃으실 때아 준비 잘했구나 이게 뿌듯함이 느껴졌어요. 오늘 프로토스전 저그전 어떻게 해야 되겠다는 개념이 다 정립이 돼 있는 상태인가요? 어 그냥 So were you well prepared against Protoss and Zerg? 네. 좋은 거딱 생기면은 좀 레더나 스트리밍 할때좀 숨겼어요. So since I practice hard. I figured out a lot of builds that can counter Zergs and Protosses. And playing on ladder, I hit those builds tonight, so I was able to exhibit them in these actual matches. <laughs> Are you really that greedy when you play against Zergs? Gary says you're placing greedy tonight. So I tend to play much more standard games, but since it was a best of three, I figured out that Rogue was going to play probably a little bit more on the defense. So yeah, I was slightly uh, more greedy and that allowed me uh, to get ahead. And she's asking him, how about your TVP tonight? He says, Zess is a really tough player to play against. I didn't expect myself to win, but the build that I used to win against him twice, I've used the same build before, and I had a lot of confidence in it, and I thought my execution was pretty spot on with it. Now you are the dark horse of the season. And now in the group selection. Are you looking forward to participating in that taste of the tournament? The last time I was in the group selection, every player said I was the easiest opponent. But I think they're going to think differently about me this time around. <laughs> so he said, I don't think I'll be picked early in the group selection. I should be one of the last players selected. Any final comments? comments? It's a new year. I've got really good feelings about my career this year. I'm going to do my very best to 
to succeed. And this is also a very important period in my life. So I'm going to make the best of it. And I'm also really happy I started off strong in this tournament. And I want to thank all the players who helped me practice and all the sponsors who supported StarCraft 2. All right, that does it. Okay. Excellent. Uh, definitely some strong words there from Bunny, saying that he yeah. thinks he'll be one of the last people picked in the round of 16. So maybe he will be. I, he's looking really good. My little pocket thing's coming out. Oh. That's what happens when I say GG too loud. It just <laughs> pops right out. All right. We're going to go to a short break. When we come back, we will go to the losers match and see who will be eliminated first in day one of the GSL Code S. I Ah! 
야, 여태까지 했더니 가장 참신한 애들인 것 같아, 진짜로. 오케이. 야, 앱 진짜 잘 만들었다. 그러니까 사진도 이제 생으로 찍으면 안 돼. 그런 시대가 왔어. 어플을 이용해서 잘생겨 보이게 찍어야 돼. 우리 모두 셀기꾼이 돼야 돼요, 여러분들. 아, 이렇게 사진을 보내는 기능이 있구나. 아! 아! 얼짱가 또. 이걸 꼭 다운받을 만한 어플인 것 같아요, 진짜로. 기아 꿀잼. BJ들의 치열한 전투 대경기. 어마어마하죠? 자, 대진표 한번 저희가 정리하면서 떨어지잖아요. 딱입니다. 올해 최고의 또 대상을 받았어요. 그렇죠. 일단은 두 팀으로 나눴어요. 그는 형님한테 게임을 접은 적이 없습니다. 아, 잘합니다, 로이조. 와, 진짜 잘하네. 그러니까 처음부터 좀 있을 수 있거든요. 그러니까요. 배선의 방어는 공격이다. 핫한 그런 메타만 딱 사용하고 있는 모습이 보이죠. 그리고 엄청나게 아, 이렇게 해서 본선 안내를 해드려야 돼요. 세 글자 대 서윤. 2017. We're so glad to be back. Welcome. Yes. Thank you for joining us. But we're about to eliminate our first player. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we already had Bunny get out in first place, which might surprise some people, but he's in good shape. And as you said, he is practicing his ass off. He really wants it. So good for him. Beating Zest out, beating Rogue out, only losing a single map tonight. But now we go on to that loser match, full of people that lost two maps each. That's right. Chalk pull. The winner, he gets one more chance, but has to beat Zest. The loser goes to the nerd graveyard. Yeah. With all the other dead GSL players. <laughs> oh my. Echo, daybreak, overgrowth. Okay. Um, Maybe that nerd will come back and he won't be in the nerd graveyard, but return. He'll just stay in nerdgatory for a while. Could come out of the nerd graveyard as a nerd zombie. That's true. That's possible. Or possibly he comes back dead, but he wants the blood of other nerds. He's a nerd vampire. Oh my god. The gosh. only way he can stay alive are is vampires. by feasting on players that are in the Grandmasters ranking area. <laughs> are, uh, are, are vampires dead or are they undead? Or that's, are they... that's a good question. Well, no, okay, no, no. They, they would have to be, a vampire has to be undead because a vampire will kill you, suck the blood out of your neck, then you're dead, but then you become a vampire. I think it's some vampire lore, but I'm not sure if that's correct in all cases because otherwise vampires would be kind of like zombies. There'd be way too many of them. And vampires, unlike zombies, can use doors. So now I'm questioning myself because if vampires, if you get bit by a vampire and you become a vampire, then that means that we are in a lot of trouble. Unless we all just stop the earth from turning and just get it based towards the sun. Well, and we're we garlic everywhere. Yeah, that's true. We all cook, but they can't enter doors, right? Unless you let them, so. Is that true? Yeah. All right. That's how I keep vampires at my house. That's right. Forgot about that. Anyways, guys. Why do you think I never lose? invite Graf it over? <laughs> All right. This is game number one between these two players of Fight for Survival in the GSL. In the bottom right, one of the old school players here in the GSL. Team Lee Fang. Team. I don't even hear your voice in that one. Yeah. It's just my nasal That's voice. Android tasteless. In the upper left in the red. Jin Air Green Wings. Rogue. Okay, that's definitely. I can hear you mean that one for sure. If you were a character from the Wizard of Oz, and I was a character from Wizard of Oz, who would we be? You'd be the guy without the brain. I'd be the scarecrow? Yeah, you'd be the scarecrow. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you I think you'd be the lion. I think yeah, I have no courage, right? That too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely not the Tin Man. The Tin Man's the coolest by far. Mm -hmm. You might be the Tin Man because you like to mech so much. Todd would be the Tin Man. Todd would be the Tin Man? Yeah. He's got no heart. That's right. That's true. He's a heartless nerd. Yeah. He's got tats just like the Tin Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, let's see how Rogue does this time around. Uh, I thought Keen looked pretty solid, but it was kind of tough. Keen, uh, excuse me, rather, uh, when we watched Rogue playing, I mean, Bunny was really in, in, in good form, you know. Um, so I'm wondering if, if Keen is uh, actually close to Bunny in that regard. 
Well, I don't think that Keen is at the level that Bunny is at right now. And I'm not just saying that because they both played Zess and won one and one loss. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's just Bunny has been more consistently good recently. And watching both of their plays, Bunny, like, Bunny looks completely solid right now. You know what I mean? Like, he just, yeah. everything about his play just looks very good, very solid. There's not a lot of mistakes. Keen, there's a, a mistake here and there. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> Although, Keen looked better, I think, than uh, a lot of us expected. Yeah. So we have a Reaper. He's spasming right now. He's making a heart, actually. That makes a heart. Look at that. It does. That's cool. Happy Valentine's He's Day. He's shadow dancing. <laughs> yeah. Happy early Valentine's Day. Really early. Yeah. Well, it came out of the blue. At least now you have an excuse for not having a date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we have the uh, Reaper coming out, trying to poke in here, do a little bit of damage. Does chuck that uh, queen back a little bit. Stim has now started. Ling speed. Yeah. We'll be finishing, as usual, before that. Just the super standard Terran build here. Double medevac, stim timing. Reaper going to be running around, just checking everything out. This game could not get more standard at the moment. Overlord coming through. Yeah, he's looking for that Overlord. Yeah, and he spotted it. So the Overlord's going to attempt to retreat on the high ground. He already knows that's going to get away. Doesn't bother wasting his time. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, the other Overlord comes in over here. Okay, what also did he see? He didn't actually get to see it yet. But actually, with the amount of Marines he's seen, I think he has a very good idea of what's going on. He saw two up yeah, there, he sees three point. here. And like the fact that there were three walking out of the base means there's probably another barracks behind, right? So Yeah, well, it's, it's a good point because you don't have to just see the production facility. Sometimes just seeing the, unit, yeah. well, the units and the numbers of them alone yeah. can give you enough information, especially with the two Marines out there and then the three, uh, they are ready to defend. Oh, okay, so he's going one Evo. I do wonder if this is just going to be for drops. Like, you can just go one Evo to get a very quick, like, carapace upgrade here. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times against this build, Zergs like to go double Evo for upgrades. So I'm just, it almost feels like he wants to do a counter Zergling drop. This was one of the early counters. Well, he is getting the carapace, which, I mean, he would probably get either way, but... Uh, one of the early counters to this double stim timing push was to drop Lings in their base as they were moving out with it and trying yeah. to do some damage. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's not the most popular way to do it, but some Zergs from time to time you see like a lead hawk or someone do it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this has actually just been a very textbook TVZ so far. We did see the Lings take out that one Reaper in the middle of the map. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got the two medevacs, so he might as well come out here and see if he can't drop, do any damage, especially with the wall in. Uh, they're insecure. Uh, there is that armor upgrade Artos was talking about. Looks like the Ling will see this, so he's going to drop here and just clean that up. Uh, he may think twice about doing anything too aggressive now that it's it's more than clear what Terran has and what Terran can throw at him. Yeah, it's uh, just a lot of Queens and Lings out, so he's, he's not going for any drop like I was kind of trying to guess there, but that's fine. He definitely has enough units that he shouldn't take too much damage from this. We'll see how, how good Keen's Micro is. A lot of times you can still whittle some things down here. Yeah, he just has to make sure he doesn't lose the, the medevacs to queens here. So he comes Ooh. forward. Good Save control by Rogue. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah. The Lord's like, whoo. Don't put me out on the map again. <laughs> Don't even use me to drop later on. Yeah. Uh, medevac is headed out right now. He's just joining up. He still wants to get some damage done here. Baneling Nest is going to finish up, but... Very good Micro Terrans can eliminate Slow Banes before they hit him. So uh, the setup right now that Terran has uh, with this drop is still not that easy to get in there and drop the Zerg. This is a, one of the maps that's different from uh, other maps we've seen where like the main you pretty much can't get to without at least being spotted uh, naturally by the, the second base or the third base here. So he, he basically stays on the edge and tries to shave off Creep, Overlord's yeah. legs. Um, obviously it's, it's actually pretty tricky for both sides, right? If Terran overextends, they lose. Yeah. If Zerg doesn't defend right, they end up getting beaten up too much. Yeah, it, it's like the game is more likely to end at this point for the Zerg player, like if they really mess up. But Rogue is sitting back. He's doing it right. He's like relaying his creep. He's kind of just following the medevacs around and making sure that he's fine. Oh, my God, it got away. Wow. This is just a story of overlords that get away at the last second. 
<laughs> you know? Overlord have... story. That's right. <laughs> Overlord story is what it's called. Everything here, guys, if you come here, is called story. It's really funny. Yeah, a lot of things in Korea. You go to you see a coffee shop, it's called, like, Coffee Story. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, well, how good of a story could that be? It sounds like I've heard this story all before. And it, <laughs> they, they put Tori at the end of a lot of things here, too, which is yeah. kind of funny because it's, like, part of the story. Yeah. yeah. Well, in Korean language, they do a lot of things. They, like, merge two words together. Yes. They have archon words out here, if you they will. They really do. They and really then they do. sometimes do that in English, and I'm like, well, that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That just sounds like some kind of a sound. It sounds <laughs> like somebody, you know. It sounds like a sound. No, it doesn't. Doesn't everything sound like a sound? It doesn't sound like a word, I guess is what I mean. Yeah. It just sounds like a noise coming out of your mouth. <laughs> What was that's that? A, that's what you merge and ah. <laughs> uh, okay, coming forward now, putting some pressure on. Ooh, yeah, a lot of lings coming down. The queen's moving up as well. It doesn't look like he should be able to do it. Nice flank coming up. Really like that move. And Keen will have to pick up and get out of okay, here. Not a bad pickup. And that uh, widow mine did a lot of damage. Ooh, wow. 15 kills? 18. 18 kills, excuse me. Uh, it, Tasis, by the way, uh, yes. just while we're still on the sound thing, you remember that sound you made that described like Nestine and alien language or something like that? Oh, no, yeah, what was it? It was like if aliens came down uh, and had to describe Nestine, <laughs> they, they wouldn't like imagine the, the word only way to use. describe was, an ST is was, through an alien word. That's right. And I said the word, it would probably sound like <laughs> that or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's somewhere on YouTube. It's uh, a word that they only use for the greatest leader their yeah. civilization that's four billion years old has ever right. had. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Caesar, Genghis Khan, you know. Zeno, everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's coming down now. Good pickups. And it looks like, oh Ooh. my god. Damn. That Widow Mine hit actually taking out a medevac. And now this one, not going to be able to get anything done. Probably. Oh, instant uh, <laughs> turn there on the Mutus to get the Widow Mine. So he gets everything. Uh, you got to be careful as Keen. You do not want to overextend here. But Keen's been doing a very good job with his Widow Mines, baiting out the Zerg army. You know, it, it's tough for Zerg, this part of the game. Yeah. Because Zerg basically have to throw units at the Terran that they know they're going to lose some of. Mm hmm and really try to figure out, okay, you know, where are the Widow Mines? How much can I throw in here? Do I do I know when I'm overextending? And Terrans are just so good at morphing the shape of their army every time mm -hmm. to make that a favorable exchange. Ooh. Oh! Ooh. 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 That hurts. Ooh. The Owlcaster. <laughs> uh, that would be a hoot. Oh, Artosis. Uh, <laughs> okay, nice connections there. Oh my gosh. Uh, right as 1-1 one, one was, or rather 2-2 uh, two, two was finishing. Yeah, and that does put him up an upgrade for a little bit, but that plus two melee almost done. Also getting Mutalisk attack, which is pretty cool here, and Burrow. So that is definitely one way where Rogue can kind of shift this game right on its head. You do a good uh, Baneling landmine, and everything can go wrong for Terran off of that. Yeah, well, especially with Terran skirting around the map like this, you know, hoping to set up some good engages. You can kind of predict where Terran want to tuck their army before an attack. Uh, and if they're far back enough, okay, here we go now. Definitely a good move to pull back those Baylings. They would have immediately been chewed up by the, uh, yeah. the Widow Mines. You need to send some of those links in there first. Quite a, quite good splits, actually, on these Baylings so far. He's cleaned up a lot of the Widow Mines as well. And as long as you keep that Widow Mine count down, you can really engage a lot easier, a lot quicker on the Terran. Now, it is uh, five bases to the Terran's three here. And it seems like, uh, you know, unlike in the game with Bunny, uh, Keen is, you know, He's been in uh, the Zerk's face, but he hasn't actually won any of the trades there. He hasn't killed off any of the hatches. Let's yeah. see if this moment might be that that we've been looking for. Wow, a lot of Banelings actually rolling forward. Uh, it looks like Keen was maybe doing something else here, trying to get by with the Medivac. The Muta's on top of that, though, while the Banelings are trying to hold on to his other base. Uh, he's coming back now. Wow, Banelings still regrouping. A lot of units still for Rogue. He is holding on absolutely everywhere. And this game in particular, you can really kind of see the difference between Keen and Bunny. Yeah. Like, Keen is a very good Terran, but Rogue is just holding on so much easier than he did against Bunny. Okay, as you can see now, uh, the Lings do spill in. Uh, and it does seem that uh, like Keen may not have enough. So many Bailings coming here. Basically, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. As Rogue is eaten through the entire Terran army, and he's even going to go for these Medivacs back here. Oh, nice. You just got glaives, guys. Yes, they do. Hashtag never forget. <laughs> never forget. That's right. In the, the fourth glaive that does zero. That's. Oh! oh my God. I actually God. didn't even see the Banelings there no, for a second. I saw it like a millisecond before it happened. I couldn't even yeah. say anything. 
That was a crazy Baneling landmine, though. He's like, hey, how does that feel? Do you like to have invisible units that do splash kill you that you don't see? And he's like, well, it's not invisible. It's actually bro <laughs> it just blew him up. Yeah. Well, um, kind of an interesting exchange that we had back there. Supply count, though, right now, I think really highlights uh, the current setting for this game. It's 128 supply for Terran, 187 supply. Now about 190 supply here for Zerg. So Zerg definitely have enough, and I think this should, um, you know, tip the scale here in Zerg's favor as Terran's taking a fourth. Zerg should be able to come and knock that down. Yeah, yeah, and that's like his main CC floating as well. So, like, that just kind of spells disaster here for Keen. He puts so much into getting damage done that he doesn't even have a fourth CC, so. There it is, yeah. GG. Well, basically, the sub that came up, Rogue managed to stay fine economically. Yeah. Uh, Keen got in there, did some damage. Keen did not take his own fourth base, but instead depleted his uh, his main base and then waited to the last second, really focusing on just massing up. So in some yeah. ways, he was even more aggressive yeah. than uh, Bunny was, even though Bunny had more success with aggression. He did. And he waited to the last minute to then try to float his main command center over to a fourth and then propel the game further. But because Keen had that uh, really bad engage in the middle where everything got wiped out, and especially with the Baneling detonation, uh, there's no way he can get a fourth base up. Yeah. Uh, if he wants to win, I think he has to go into some greedy play here. Okay. Uh, Rogue is playing a very conservative macro base style. Like, he didn't even go double Evo when he saw what the build was from Keen, right? Like, he's just he's being conservative every way. He's just trying to make sure he stays alive. Bunny mentioned he thought that Rogue would play on the defensive side tonight. We saw Bunny with the faster third commands and stuff like that and taking the bases over and over and over. And that's what Rogue had a hard time against. So, that's right. if Keen wants to win, I think he needs to mix it up like that. I agree. Rogue still in, uh, in good form here. Don't forget. The survivor of this match has to battle it off against Zest. Guys, this is the hardest one-on-one -on -one eSport of all time, StarCraft! And we have these two players duking it right now in a fight for survival, a fight to move on to the round of 16 in the GSL Code X. In the upper right, in the blue. Team Lee Fang, Keen. Get this on, get this camera on him a little bit longer here. I know. Right? Uh, in the bottom left, in the red. Jin Air Green Wings, Rogue. Okay, so. Already, McTo you know you say, says. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. I'm the guy. Uh, you say that this is the hardest one versus one esport. I would like to upgrade that. Like, this is the hardest one versus one game. Okay. Like, this is, literally, StarCraft is, like, there's so much to it, and it's, like, so complex and difficult that this is how they're starting to train AI now with DeepMind, yeah. right? Like, we're actually to that point, it's like, yeah, I mean, you, we, chess was solved a long time ago by AI, and then Go was solved, and now they're trying to get into this because it's more abstract. It's like, you, you know, it's just... Yeah, well, it's, it's a game of incomplete information. Yeah. So... Yeah, essentially, not only do you have to be really good mechanically and develop these incredible instincts to react and respond everywhere, but you also have to know how to lie and how to detect lies as well. I mean, you can hide information in this. You can, um, you know, attack from an unusual and perhaps illogical angle, and, and that may surprise your yeah, opponent. Yeah. There's so much that you can do that is it's hard to learn, and and you know, if you just look at the sheer speed at which you have to play. No game has, you know, a mechanical component as profoundly difficult and complex as StarCraft. Just yeah. doesn't have it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, StarCraft is hard, and they're trying their best. Our StarCraft is a hard game, guys. In <laughs> case you're wondering, you're probably looking at this game being like, I wonder how hard this game is. It's really hard. Yeah. It's very difficult. You could still try it. Oh, totally. You should still try it. You should. But don't be discouraged. It's a great way to kind of figure out what type of person you are. It's also a great way to humble Starcraft. yourself. It really yeah. is. Nothing will humble you like StarCraft. You got one of those one of those cocky nerds that's your friend. Put him in a game of Battle.net. Yeah. StarCraft, man. He keeps beating you at Mario Kart? Don't worry. Don't worry, man. Just put him on StarCraft Drop on the as many bananas as you want on this map. Those bailings are still going to get you, buddy. Yeah. 
Oh, man. Uh, quick Overlord speed, by the way, by Rogue. So uh -huh. he definitely wants to get the scouting done. Two Hellions coming out now for Keen. What's the game the kids play nowadays against each other? Um, you know, like in our day, it was like Goldeneye and okay. like Mario Kart and uh, stuff. Like that's what Rocket played. League's pretty popular. Is that is that it's something actually a kids pretty play? good game too? But I'm, I'm not. Is that, that for it. is that for PlayStation Xbox? I think it's on everything. Okay. I mean, I, I have it on my PC, um, just as a you know, computer game. But yeah, that's a big one. I don't, I don't know if that's I don't know if there's necessarily a game that everybody plays anymore. Because there was when we were kids. So I, d I just wonder yeah, if there's we were one limited. Like that now. I mean, we were much more it's limited. Probably like Call of Duty or something. Wouldn't it be? I don't know. Isn't no, it? I don't think that's true. I think it really just depends. I mean, it's you know, it, it, if you look at games, it's a lot like forms of entertainment now. Like if you look at how many shows Netflix has, or how many different streams there are on any streaming service. But let's just use Twitch for example. Yeah. You can basically find what you want to watch. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's, and it, it and it's same with games. There's more games out and more games being released than ever before. And mm. so you can kind of, you know, it's the same way like. What was it like? The Beatles were like the biggest band for a while, but it's like you didn't have access to that much music. There yeah. was no Spotify. There was no Pandora. There was no dubstep. There was no. There was, there was no. <laughs> there was no glitch hop yet. So, uh, okay. So he's coming in here real, real quick. We'll continue this conversation in a minute. A oh my god! Look is. at this guy. Jeez. He juggled those Hellions like crazy. He really did. He could be a Damn. circus clown with juggles like that. Yeah. We well, certainly no clown this game. No. I think the only clown here might be Rogue. <laughs> Five drones killed. Pretty good splitting overall. Does lose a lot of mining time with that and an okay amount of Zerglings. Quite a quick Spire, though. Look at that. That is a two hatchery, two base layer Spire. That is crazy fast from Rogue. And that's generally good against like more tech heavy builds. And the Overlords did scout that, right? So, yeah. I mean, this is. He went one Rax. Made the reactor for the Hellions, went into dropship, and is going into a third command center. So there is definitely a window in here where mutas are going to be a really big pain for Keen to deal with. And uh, just like any player who's going to get mutas, a lot of times the third base is taken while the mutas are distracting the Terran player on their side of the map. Mm -hmm. You know what can kill Liberator Artosis? Uh, Mutalisks. You're right. You win the prize. Wow. Uh, I was going to say Stalkers, but I know that's not true. You're going to say Zerglings, and you're like, wait, wait, no, no, can I take it back? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so the Liberator's flying around. It, it, not too impactful. In fact, it's not even really going to be able to get in here with just the Queens alone, uh, kind of deflecting everything. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, he's just he's doing what he can do with it. This is just part of the build to try to do some harassment. See you in hell. All right, the Mutas are out. And, of course, he knows they're out, so there should be some turrets starting to go up back at home. Come on, turrets. Where are you? Did Still you waiting on that third base. Hmm. He might want to spend a little bit more of his gas. I like how he I waits do, at the Liberator. Yeah, that's that's really smart. Yeah, that's really cool. So he stays back there. He's going to try to come in later. Uh, the Marines and the turret do drive back. Uh, yeah. The Mutas for the time being. So the Mutas are not going to be able to get in there and do too much damage. So in some ways, even though that Liberator didn't do too much, uh, back at the Zerg space, they did buy a bunch of time. Mm -hmm. uh, now another Liberator comes and sets up. Yeah, that's really annoying for him to have to deal with right now. It, it kills two drones. It Delaying mining time when you have less bases is even more powerful. So very well done. Oh, even two more drones. Really, really well done. The Mutas had to fly all the way back across the map to take this mm -hmm. out. Uh, of course, they eventually do. But these are little hiccups in the uh, income right now for Rogue. And Rogue's on two bases, so if you interrupt one of those two bases for mining, that's yeah. a lot. That's 50% of his income right there that goes away. That's a whole mule's worth of income that he doesn't get. <laughs> okay, Terran now uh, going to push out here. Probably apply a little bit of pressure. Yeah, Baneling Speed is just now starting, and 1-1 one, one in Combat Shields is finishing up for Keen. So I'm actually a little bit afraid. Like, if he hits right before Baneling Speed finishes, it's going to be hard to clear that out. When you have a two-base Mutalisk strategy, you need to hold them off for quite a bit. You need to keep them pinned in their base. And has he been doing a good enough job with these mutas that that's going to be the case? Uh, now, there was a nice little play. He goes in there and takes out those five uh, SCVs. You know, with Widow Mines out on the map. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is such Just a imagine. sneaky play. I love yeah. moves like that. It's, it's funny because he puts them all there. So it's like if you come across this part of the map, which is completely feasible, yeah. you're dead. It's just like a part of the map that you might see them use. And if they do, you can win the game off that. Yeah, I used exactly. to call those, like, what did I used to call those at StarCraft? I'm like, 
random outposts or something, I would yell at people, man. Like, why was those turrets there? Yeah. What is this? But that's exactly why, because it's, it's making a random outpost. You're playing single player. You're playing <laughs> Sim City. Does that just look cool to you? But dude, it works sometimes. Yeah, it does. Yeah, sometimes you're just like flying around the map, and you're like, oh, all of a sudden the muters over here while I go back and manage my base, and no, then you it, come back and the muters are gone. I'll, I'll never forget when at, in I am Katowice when Revival flew the he had the game. Flew a giant flock of mutas into just the most random set of like four or five widow mines, and the game was over. It was like, oh my god, yeah, that is so painful. That was so oh, random. Yeah. Well, it's it's smart too because there's not a lot you can do to prep for it, but you end up getting encouraged yeah, more and more. Goes. Oh my god, that's so crazy. Wait a minute, that is Where'd so crazy. <laughs> wow, that's going to give Terran a lot more muscle on the map to move yeah. out now. Yeah. Like, he, he doesn't even really have to worry about harassment now. That is just such a giant clump of mutas that's been killed off. So, Keen pushing out onto the map. Very well done with his random outpost of, of Widow Mines. Pushing back the creep. Fourth base from Rogue is going up at the top. Like, but it looks like he wants to go for the jugular here. Yeah, well, I, I think that's exactly what he should do. I mean, he, yeah. he did get all those kills. Yeah, and when it's a two-base mute, I mean, you just don't have as many lings and bangs. Yes, there, there's an abnormal softening of the Zerg army that happened back there, and there's not a lot Zerg can do to try to recuperate, but just control really, really well and mm -hmm. not overextend and hope that Terran maybe makes a mistake here and there. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Keen just kind of sitting there, getting ready, pushing back the creep even more on the other side. I love this move, the fact that he's doing this before he's moving up that ramp again, because that's where Rogue could have actually crushed this, is a big flank. Okay, another pickup. He's using this little area back here as a good cover position. It's just really hard for Zerg to actually get in there and, and win the fight. And it allows him to crawl up to the high ground and, and try to reposition. Oh, the Baneling's rolling in. That's actually a really good Baneling hit. Yeah. It's fantastic Baneling hits. He traded very nicely there. But Terran still has push potential here. Uh, supplies right now are 158 to 129 here with Terran in the lead. And he, I think he's actually at the point where he's starting to breach his base. He can even get the Baneling's nest if he wants. If he gets that, I mean, unless he does perfectly with the remaining banelings, there's not a whole lot he can do. Oh man, that is a huge amount of lings right now, and the Marines actually splitting very well. That is not enough banelings coming from the north, GG. and that's it. Nicely done. Keen ties it up. Okay. Hell yeah. Well done by Keen. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Rogue, he kind of scouted that Keen was being a little bit greedy in this way and tried yeah. to capitalize with this two-base mute play, which that is a build that can be good. We haven't seen Zergs pull it off very well against Terran recently, but uh, Keen, very smart with those Widow Mines, man. Like, he really had that planned out. He did a really good job. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, of course, there's moments where those mutas just never fly over there. Rogue doesn't even know that was ever there until maybe his friend or, uh, you know, or somebody else tells him after the game that those were hidden there. But it was a smart move. Yeah, those were there for three minutes, Rogue. He's like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it, I mean, it worked. You need to have a large number of mutas. The links are there. They do some damage, too, and can stop retreating mm -hmm. Marines. But they're also just there to, to draw the fire for the Marines while the Mutas can come in, especially with the Glaives, yeah. just take out lanes of Marines. And then the moment you decide that it's not working out for you, you fly out in whatever direction the fastest without losing any units. Yeah, yeah it's uh, quite the case. But here we go. Overgrowth this is going to be map number three. I feel like this is a good one for Rogue. You get to expand pretty far away from Terran. Let's see what happens. The winner of this game goes on to face off against Zest. And then there will be only two more players left in Group A of the GSL Codex. Okay, in the bottom left in the blue. Team Lee Fang, Keen. And uh, his opponent, down here, or rather up here in the upper Junior right. Green Wings, Rogue. So. He's going to have to use his Miracle Rogue deck to win this game. Oh my god, you're so funny. So he has two coins when his Goblin Alchemist comes out. <laughs> uh, coin, coin prep. Okay, GG. If he um, loses, he can blame the RNG. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, unfortunately in this game, that is quite a rare thing indeed. Yeah, I guess there is some degree of RNG in StarCraft where it's like, okay, like, where did you spawn? Did, four where did player you scout? Yeah, four, but I mean, I don't know, you can kind of play around small. that. Yeah, it's pretty darn small. Um, and, you know, there is some amount of RNG to, I guess, to the build order choice, like, before you scout. That's why StarCraft is the best game. It's also why it's better than, you know, UFC or bowling, because you want to know the problem with UFC and bowling, Artosis? Not enough maps. I know. There's really. not enough maps. Like, wouldn't you want to see a UFC the match octagon. like on the, on the I'm edge? Like, okay, so I'm that's... like, but well, what about a triangle map? <laughs> yeah. What about that? What about fighting on the top of a volcano? That would be interesting too. Or just a sphere. Then people say, but then there's moves. too much RNG because if the volcano erupts and everybody loses. Yeah, but then everyone loses. That's fine. It's like yeah. not RNG favoring one side. But maybe the RNG is more exciting. But actually, that RNG would favor older players, right? Because they are like more ready to die or something. <laughs> They're less afraid, so they yeah. can really open up in the volcano. Um, so, by the way, about this uh, about this map that we're on right now, um, I would like to see Keen either be very greedy, like extremely greedy, or do like. Three base all in, taking the expansion, his third above his main base. So he just rallies through, you know, like one of those where yeah. your actual reinforcements are protecting your third base. Yeah, yeah. I feel like either of those it's would be like a good a, choice. It's like an here. expansion that you push off of. Yes, yes. You know, it, 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 it solves both things. Did you see that uh, most recent UFC fight, by the way? Oh, uh, no, Ronda I missed Ronda Rousey it. goes down. It's pretty crazy, man. Yeah, I heard it was like yeah. 30 seconds. It was brutal. I heard that Todd cried when it happened. I for sure. Because all he wants is longer UFC fights. <laughs> <laughs> he likes macro fights. Yeah. They just came in there punching. It took no skill. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even know how to fight properly. You don't even know how to fight in a late game. I'm gonna <laughs> win in points. <laughs> Four speedlings actually kind of sneaking around. Okay, the links do come in. Hellion's backing up, or Hellion, I should say. Uh, Keen was way on top of this, so this isn't actually gonna end up doing anything. All right, clear. Oh, finally, we, finally we gets the Hellion. Hellion. Okay. Well, that was like what the Lings are worth, basically. So. Yeah. There you go. That's fine. I don't know if the Hellion is as important, potentially. Yeah. No, later on, it's kind of a fix-all mm -hmm. to allow you to develop more later on. Look, this he is he is playing a very greedy build. Ooh. Roach Warren. Now this could mean multiple things. This could just be a safety thing because he saw Reactor Factory. So you know, going Roach Ravager type play uh, early game. He's very good against things like Mass Hellions. And he's scouting to see what it is, because this could be like a two-factory blue flame. You don't know. Yeah. You don't know. So the Roach Horn is pretty smart. But what he is going to scout here, will he see the third CC? Oh, uh, did he see that? I don't think he quite saw the third CC. He might have been able to see the edge of it. I Kind of a tough call with that, just that yeah, angle there. Yeah, it was there. super close if he saw it. Like, it was right on the edge, either way. We're both right, Tasis. He saw it, and he didn't see yeah. it. Yeah. The We're cat right, no is matter both what, alive guys. and dead within That's the right. box. <laughs> So, um, the Liberator's going to come up here, but he may be massing a bunch of roaches to attack up here. Denying one of these locations from mining might not be, you know, if he just rotates drones somewhere else, because that, that hatch may just be there for the function of, um, of production, not so much the function of expanding. Now, yeah, he might do a uh, decent amount of damage and then just uh, expand later on. So, he's going to make a bunch of... Uh, uh oh, he wanted to try to trap that. Ooh, nice maneuver right there, but the queen does uh, back up in time. Ah! All right, he does. He does get rid of the liberator. Yep. But Terran is walling in. Yeah, he's starting to set up liberators too, so, so he's kind of feeling uh, what's going on here. You saw that Warren and all. So he's making the lings behind the roaches because the lings are faster when they get across the map. Mm -hmm. So he has these roaches that do a lot of damage. Yeah, but and there's there's liberators being made and sieged up. A bunker and a siege tank is about to pop out. Stim is about to finish. The all three I don't of those know if can he's going to break it. I, they, they can be susceptible to Ravager hits. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of all of those units there. So if the Ravagers kill one, it might still be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Ravagers come in and start to drop those piles right away. Clearing some SCVs. He's going to break the bunker relatively fast here. Or absolutely not. Okay, yeah, there it goes. Okay, now he fires the Ravager uh, shots, takes that out. The artillery right now from Zerg, pretty good. SCVs are coming through. A lot are being picked off. It's basically just Ravagers remaining here until he gets reinforcements. By the way, a dozen more Lings on, uh, on the way across the map. Really good Biles coming out of Rogue here every single time, clearing both of those right away. He only ends up killing six SCVs. Yeah, you got a couple Ravagers. Yeah, you got a lot of Marines off, but 
That was not as many STVs as I yeah. think he was really hoping for. Y usually you'd want to get a lot more. Yeah. Uh, because that way, even if you don't kill them, they're not mining as much, and you're still mining just fine back home, especially with that Liberator being taken out. He is denying depots, but Terran is not in the point point in the game where it's yeah. like he's going to get supply blocked. It, it, it's They have the same worker count, and there's yeah. a third command center already done for Keen that's also dropping mules. So it's like, I look at this attack, and I just I don't think it was good enough for Rogue. No. Well, I think the idea was was pretty cool. Yeah. But the problem was with tanks, a bunker, and corrosive biles. I mean, mm -hmm. how long do you think the cooldown is on that ability that you're going to take out all three of those things separately while they're still making Liberators tanks? Yeah, it's pretty tough. And this will actually allow for a counter push. Uh-oh. Um, He's doing a TVP build. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, the, the counter push, though, is going to be really tough with those siege tanks in the back. And he knows, basically, Zerg is trying to tech up. He, he, Zerg had completely backed off. Now, uh, sometimes when you do an attack like this, you're actually feeding into the Zerg because Zerg still had a decent army. I mean, you were relying on a really good position to survive, not mm -hmm. just the sheer uh, might of your army. Now, okay, here he comes. He sieges up. Well out of creep range. Very important to keep that creep back. Otherwise, the Zerglings will crush this. Good spread on those siege tanks. Just poking with the Marines right now. One siege tank as well. So there is a timer on this. Eventually, Rogue is going to have to run in here. Yeah, the uh, Hatchery is taking damage from the siege tank, which yeah. does mean that he Quite has to react. Pit. Yeah, it's getting lower. He's fast, Tasteless. Here we go. All right, a lot of Lings running in. Some good Crosa Biles coming down, clearing that first siege tank. The Lings getting on top of just about everything, and Keen is going to have to. No, actually, uh, more Marines coming up. That turns Rogue around. Good rally. Oh, oh my, my God. God. It's got one HP. Literal one HP. Yeah. Not <laughs> one shot from anything, but one HP. He's going to try to come down there and get it. All right. Well, you got that closure in your life, but uh, <laughs> you do not have a hatchery anymore. Ouch. And I would say that's a better trade here. Yeah. For uh, for the Terran and with Keen having a third base up and running, it's almost you know no, this is nil chance that Rogue can recuperate. It, he just started Baneling speed. He just Oof. started. His creep spread is low. His fourth is so disjointed, and Keen is going for that type of play that we were talking about before. Massive amounts of barracks. He's expanded upwards, which means he can rally right through. He is going to be completely aggressive. And I can't, like, how does Rogue hold on against it? Yeah, he's picking up. Uh, now, granted, Rogue does have this base at the upper left that's finished, but that's not a hard location to push. And Creep is not connecting that. Terran can pick a lot of different fights in a lot of various areas. Bunker and Depot Wall going to complete over here to only secure this further. It's just not a long distance, really, for uh, the Terran to try to push up. No, it's really not. And I mean, rallying up there, this is the, the painful part. Look at the creep on the mini-map. Just look at it. Yeah. You, you can't rally over here quickly. There's nothing in front of the base. So as soon as you're attacking, like, I, I mean, you you have to wait till he's right on the hatchery already. Just dodges the corrosive miles, but that does give Zerg a moment to breathe as they do have to uh, micro back. But Ugh. Terran is still shaving off lots of Zerg units. Yeah, picking off Banelings here and there. Okay, Baneling speed finishes. That really helps out a lot. He's got to target these Banes down, and he wow, does. really good control. Picks up. He'll unload just around these reinforcements. Many, many more medevacs over here. He's got Widow Mines with the army. It's going to be really tough, Martos. It's really difficult to stop this Terran push. It is, but I love what Rogue is going for here. He's going for Ravager uh, Ling Bane, and I feel like this gives him a much better shot. If he lands some of these Biles and just having that ranged attack, if he was going to Ling Ling Bane, this game would just end, I think. Like, this I, is I at agree. least giving him a shot. Well, especially in this narrow area. I mean, if you just spray tons of corrosive vials down there, there's not a lot of room to, to run anywhere. But Terran seems to be reconfiguring his army setup. Now we have some really nice takeouts there. Oh, he's going to try to come in here and get these Ravagers. All right, dodges all those corrosive vials. Some good ones coming down, but he actually micros forward. A very swift move here by Keen, running out of all the vials and starting to pick off the Ravagers as well. Rogue yeah. is not long for this world. Yeah, I love how Keen is, is shifting between where he's attacking and trying to get the units that just can't run away, and that's going to be the G. Ah. G, -G. Keen is going to the final match here yeah. tonight. Yeah, he is. Uh, well done. I think that Keen chose very good strategies there in that game. He really did. Uh, it was a strong defense against Rogue's. Kinda, it wasn't an all-in push, but it was definitely a very aggressive low econ push that he, he pulled off. Didn't get enough SCDs there. But yeah, man, I mean, that was uh, that was good play. Unfortunately, Rogue falling out last place. He only won a single game tonight. This was not the showing 
that he was hoping for at the beginning of 2017. He's already out of GSL. Last yeah. year he was lackluster. The thing is, the year before that he was one of the best circuits in the world. So, like, where are we at in Rogue's career here? This is really rough. It's a good question, man. Um, well, Keen survives, but he's got his biggest challenge yet. He's got to go up against Zest. Yeah, and uh, Zest did manage to beat him out two to one in the first match of the night. So maybe Keen has learned from that a bit. Got to see Bunny play, and we'll see how it goes. We're going to go to a short break. When we come back, our final best of three to see who's going to be the survivor of Group A in tonight's GSL Code S. It's over, cause that would send me under, underneath the ground. Don't say those words, I want to live in your words can murder. Only you can send me under, under, under.그래서 오늘 두 분이 네. 경쟁을 하는 거예요. 부산 전체를 돌아다니면서 저희가 일곱 개 시청자 여러분들 다 뿌리도록 하겠습니다. 4번이요. 도표 넌내 거야. 짜. 4번, 4번, 4번. 오케이. 정답입니다. 화이 군도 좋아, 군도. 와, 화물 뺏겼다. 가자. 저희 입수하러 갈게요, 저희는. 진짜 예뻐. 이건 동영상으로 찍어. <웃음> 짱 귀여워. 아 이거 매, 조명 없어도 예뻐, 예쁘게 나와야 돼. 이거 스노우 앱 진짜 대박이야. 아 텍스트도 쓸수 있네. 아 이렇게 쓸수 있구나. 단체로 이렇게 고양이가 그려져. 이렇게. <웃음> 도와의 결선 무대를 시작하겠습니다. 그런 의미를 담은 그 댄스 퍼포먼스 이 무대를 마음껏 즐기시는 모습을 계속 춤추셨으면 좋겠어요 꼭 네. 1등은요 축하합니다 조혜수씨 축하드립니다 
이거 인스타에서 연예인들이 하는 거 이거였구만. <웃음> 야, 여태까지 했더니 가장 참신한 애인 것 같아, 진짜로. 네. 야, 앱 진짜 잘 만들었다. 그러니까 사진도 이제 생으로 찍으면 안 돼. 그런 시대가 왔어. 어플을 이용해서 잘생겨 보이게 찍어야 돼. 우리 모두 셀기꾼이 돼야 돼요, 여러분들. 아, 이렇게 사진을 보내는 기능이 있구나. 아! 아! 얼짱가 또. 이걸 꼭 다운받을 만한 어플인 것 같아, 진짜로. 기아 꿀잼. PJ들의 치열한 전투 대경기. 어마어마 어? 자 대진표 한번 저희가 정리하면서 떨어지잖아요 약입니다 올해 최고의 또 대상을 받았어요 그렇죠 일단은 두 팀을